the importance of network programmability has been well established. Now we are going to look at some very interesting scenarios in the telecommunication and the internet world where we will see how an operator or a customer or an enterprise um, or even a third party could program another operator, enterprise, customer or a third party infrastructure. We'll start off with the basic motivation of it, then we'd evaluate how much worth it is going to deliver and we'll see some specific requirements through an example. So the motivation is already understood. We need to increase the level of programmability of the infrastructure uh, to create more opportunities, which would come with some issues and challenges. Uh, the issues and challenges could encompass um, the operation support system, the business support system, uh, because these could be impacted in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in very strange ways. Likewise, uh, the overall reliability is going to be uh, different from the vendor-specific uh, lifelong one-time provision services. Uh, and we need to have a fault detection mechanism and a continuous monitoring and administration service. Then the services that we shall be providing through network programmability uh, would have to be uh, created, offered, shelved, and then removed. So this involves a robust and very high level vision of how the overall service infrastructure is going to be like. So the programming is going to be need dependent on the level of um, uh, programmability the network is going to be um, implementing. While doing so, it is important to understand that the customer who is going to pay for these services has to be taken into confidence because visibility on the customer end is mandatory. Now let's look at a specific example of how introducing programmability could introduce um, some value. This is a four quadrant um, representation in which we have high and low levels of programmability and high and low uh, levels of values by introducing programmability. So we are not interested in C and D because uh, uh, these are quite uh, uh, understood we have low level of programmability and uh, uh, low level of value. So we are going to ignore it. We've got high level of programmability and uh, uh, low level of value. Uh, that is actually what we are going to ignore. So let's look at uh, the specific cases A and B. Uh, a is more of a traditional infrastructure. We have the infrastructure which can't be programmed much. So if we introduce programmability there, uh, the overall benefit that we could possibly reap in terms of value is low. But in B, we are talking about the uh, future networks uh, where we have uh, uh, highly programmable infrastructure. So uh, we need to have more programmability, a high level of programmability, and correspondingly, a high level of value. Now, moving from the traditional infrastructure to the future um, infrastructure, actually is going to involve uh, multiple pathways uh, because we could move from uh, incremental changes to altogether uh, uh, um, obviating the hardware, which is non-programming uh, supportive, and replace it with something that is purely programming based. Let's look at uh, uh, another perspective. Here we have the uh, uh, business um, support system and the operation support system interlinked through user APIs. The network management system and the end node management system are part of the OSS, uh, which in turn uh, manage and connect, provide connectivity to the network elements such as uh, routers, switches, and so forth. So uh, if you look at this traditional architecture, it would now be overhauled with the introduction of the software-defined networking, network function virtualization achieved through programmability, the overlap of STN and NFV, and a new way of looking at the changing behavior or alterable behavior of all these things would require uh, some innovative thinking. So at the crossroads of the three, we can think about network programmability where the entities involving a broad range from the customer end to the third party could all be programmed. So what are the development requirements which would appear now? Uh, first of all, 
the business processes or the workflows are going to change. Uh, then the information exchange between the more traditional entities is now going to be modified and uh, the performance requirements of these uh, uh, network elements which are programmable are now going to be redefined. And this has to be done by staff with varied level of programming expertise required. So what is programmability in terms of networking? Uh, easier said than done, but at very abstract level, um, as is a more classical computer science statement, that combining algorithms with the data structures is what programs are, are all about. So if you look at the data structures, which would be implemented on the network elements, on the OSS and BSS include, the protocols that network elements support on its interface, the management interface, management information base, the MIB or the database to administer the network elements. Uh, then the software is going to implement its own data structures like, uh, like heap, like stack, like queue, like tree, whatever. Uh, then the operation support system would have a connectivity arrangement where it would define the addresses, uh, IP, MAC, port numbers, identifiers, etc. And then the device locations, facilities would be represented by proper database resource records. And then the business support subsystem would have consumers and each consumer would have a profile. And last but not the least, the business processes would also be uh, represented through data structures. Now let's look at the uh, way uh, the um, future networks would be operated and uh, the traditional present operated networks are being compared. If we con contrast these, these could be contrasted across a range of uh, features and attributes, um, uh, possibly through some I could, I could go through. For instance, we have the manually ordered and provisioned services in, uh, in, in the present uh, uh, managed and operated networks. Uh, in, in future managed and operated networks, we'd have uh, the, the portals or cloud triggered services which are automatically instantiated. Then let's look at uh, possibly the uh, relationship between the present and future networks. Uh, the networks are largely independent of applications except specific telco services. But now, in future networks, the networks are going to be programmable by the applications themselves, including third party applications. Um, then let's look at the disk control plane. In present uh, networks, uh, we have the distributed purely distributed control plane, but uh, referring to the software defined networking and network function virtualization, we'd have a mix of centralized and distributed control planes. If we look at the uh, management of devices, it's more hardware centric device management, but we'll have the software centric network abstraction of the example we just looked at, the MIB management information base, which is used by SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. Then uh, we, we could think about uh, periodic software releases in uh, present networks, but in future based networks, which are at the crossroads of SDN, NFV, and the uh, uh, innovation based uh, technology uh, and application definition, we'd have continuous service process, which are uh, uh, sandboxed or secured. Uh, and this is going to be integrated with the uh, live environment as in, uh, DevOps. Uh, now, this particular module has referenced from uh, operational opportunities and challenges of SDN NFE programmable infrastructure. It's a report uh, from the Alliance of uh, Telecommunication. It's a US based concern which provides industry solutions. Uh, their report comprises uh, many use cases and scenarios. We are going to look at each one of these in due course of time.